Hopefully it'll show up here in a second. Now, yep, 25, we're up. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is Canvas and mastering. I got a great question last night because uh, somebody spent uh, probably an hour or more, I'm sure, working on that homework assignment that's due tonight, okay? Uh, worth a significant amount of points, unlike the primer and the uh, introductory exercises. Um, finish all that work up, go over to Canvas, hope to see your grade recorded and it's not there. And there's a reason for that. Um, the, the sync between Canvas and mastering, uh, they only guarantee that it's gonna happen every 15 minutes. Okay, and so that might mean you'll finish uh, your assignment in mastering and even if you started in Canvas and it linked you over to mastering, you answered all your questions, you got a nice grade, you've been working hard, you come back to Canvas, you want to see that grade, it'll still be showing that the grade before you got, you did any of the work you did that time. And it takes about, it could take up to 15 minutes depending on where you finish relative to that 15 minute sync cycle it does. So it only does it four times an hour and you may have to wait. And believe me, that's irritating for me too, because I'll create an assignment and then come, want to come back over to Canvas and work on it and I can't until it shows up synced and it's 15 minutes for me too and that's just kind of the way life is we want instant gratification uh, and to some extent I think you should get more than 15 minutes of syncing but that's where the system is set up I do want to share with you my um, uh, my canvas screen here since we're talking about it uh, canvas 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 there it is over there yep looks like you're seeing it and uh, I, one thing I, I want to point out is it's now been about, let's see, th these one, two worksheets were due the 28th. Uh, it's been about four or five days now since those were due. Everybody's turned it in. I've graded them all. I will be posting my solutions uh, as a PDF document right here below, say, worksheet one, two. You'll see solutions for worksheet one, two should show up there. And then, you know, when it gets closer to that uh, first midterm exam, uh, you'll have your solutions. And if you didn't get anything exactly right, you can come look here and see where my solution is posted. And then particularly for those of you who are in lab, um, there's today's lab for the Wednesday group and uh, tomorrow's lab for the two Thursday groups. Hopefully the Wednesday groups either have gotten a uh, Zoom invitation from Dr. Kim. Uh, if you haven't yet, it should be arriving shortly. He said he'd be sending it out. He intends to meet with you. I think your lab starts at 1.30 this afternoon. He'll, um, he'll meet with you for a couple minutes, give you the brief on what he expects you to do with this. There's two parts to it. Uh, one, you watch a video and do some analysis in Logger Pro, and the other, you watch two videos of two sports cars accelerating and, uh, and make a velocity versus time curve, and then uh, answer some questions on those things. I expect you should be able to do the whole uh, experiment set within the normal, I guess it's two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes, whatever we schedule for, um, for the lab period. I expect if you know, you've got that block of time blocked out where you don't have other classes because you're in our lab, you should be able to finish the, uh, the, the experiment including the write-up and upload it into Canvas in the normal lab period. Now you're not required to, um, but if you expect help from Dr. Kem this afternoon or me uh, tomorrow for the two lab sections, I'll be available during the norm normal lab periods. Um, you know, if you, you put it off until Thursday night or even Friday afternoon, because it's due not, you don't have to have it uploaded into Canvas until Friday. But if you wait to Friday afternoon to get going and you run into some difficulties, obviously I won't be hanging around on Zoom to answer your questions. And if you send me an email, I'll try to help you. But, uh, you know, obviously the preference is that you take care of the work and we, we help you take care of the work during the scheduled periods. All right, so that's the lab. Any questions on that? All right, then I'll stop sharing that with you. And instead we'll share uh, my PowerPoint because I do want to make one comment. I'm, I'm about halfway grading the worksheets uh, that were turned in today. Hopefully you're seeing my PowerPoint. Um, yep, I think that should be there. That looks good. Let me put that away because I don't need to see that screen. All right, and so I, I've drawn, sketched over here in the margin, a real rough sketch of one of the worksheet problems for today. And what you were given, I think this is, which number is it? This is number three, okay? And you know, I, I, um, I meant to ask in a polling question, and maybe I will in the future, who's had calculus and who's never had calculus? Because I think this problem, if you've had calculus, is fairly straightforward. Um, if you haven't had calculus, you may have some questions lingering about what to do. And remember what I'm referring to is we said that 
the area under the velocity versus time curve, I'll just kind of break and let you think about what the answer is, is displacement, right? Okay, and so um, we also said that the, uh, I guess that if I see a constant velocity right here, that represents a constant slope. And so that would mean a constant slope. And we try to line things up reasonably well right here, you know, hand sketches, right? That's what we're talking about. And then right here, the velocity is zero. And then right here, we see a negative velocity that's constant. That means a constant negative slope. And so now it looks about the same. These two, uh, these two geometric objects, I guess the rectangles, look to be about the same. And so it looks like you ought to be coming right back to there. And if you drew that, then the next question, I guess, is what is displacement? And as I said, it's the area under the curve. Well, this area right here, because that's a positive velocity, would be a positive area, right? Mm -hmm. And if you, if you take calculus, that makes perfect sense. Integral calculus, by the way, if you've never had calculus, is nothing more than uh, t finding areas under curves, just like this, okay? Uh, that's, you know, the, the, the marriage between physics and calculus is pretty tight. Um, people like Isaac Newton developed calculus to explain physics ideas. So without it, you know, you have to, have to think about other things. I guess where I'm going with that is this area right here, because that's a negative velocity, is seen as a negative area. And of course, if you take an integral calculus and you're used to finding areas like that, you know for certain that that's a negative area. If you've never had calculus, you might be left with the question, what is the sum of these two areas? And of course, the answer is because the rectangles look pretty much the same, the sum of those two areas is zero. One is a positive area and one is definitely a negative area and they add to zero. And so that tells you that the net displacement of this motion is zero. Uh, a couple of, uh, many people got that. I mean, I expect a lot of people have had some calculus or just had uh, good instincts on that thing. The other way you can tell is, look, you start at the origin here, right? And if you drew it right, you finish at the origin. And so the final and the initial position are in the same place. And that means displacement is zero, right? You've come right back to your starting X position. Circular motion inherently has a, as a, you come back to where you start when you come back after a circle, your overall displacement is zero. And this is one of those cases, All right? The reason I'm making a deal out of this, um, this area under the curve is because the subject for today, acceleration and then constant acceleration. And remember, acceleration is a change in velocity divided by the time interval over which that change in velocity occurs. It should look a little bit to you like, um, I guess your velocity equation, which says that's the change in position, which we call displacement, divided by the time interval. I've always thought it's interesting that we have a name for a change in position, we call it displacement. We don't have a name for the change in velocity, it's just the change in velocity. But the, you, you can see the relationship between these two guys. In fact, I guess the acceleration is the change in the change in position over the change in the change in time. Uh, you can see it that way, but just stay with the definition we got right here. And with constant acceleration, Okay, we showed with areas under a velocity time curve that we had this, these equations right here for position. Okay, and the two that were first, we, we showed pre, uh, uh, in a pretty straightforward way in the video from last night. And, and I just want to make a point for constant acceleration, like we said, um, I guess um, for constant acceleration, the velocity increases linearly. Just like for constant velocity, the position increased linearly in the problem I was talking about just a second ago. When you have constant acceleration, the velocity increases linearly. Okay, the other thing that you should notice from this, and again, we did areas under curves to get this second equation here, um, it's not linear in position anymore, right? When you have constant acceleration, uh, what happens is that the position changes and since it's a time squared here, that's a, that's a quadratic, that's a parabola. The shape of the position against elapsed time curve is gonna be parabolic. It's gonna be, a, it's gonna be quadratic, okay? And you know, so that, that's the expected shape for constant acceleration. Um, I sh mentioned in the video, and I, I actually threw up a quick little math derivation for this third equation. Uh, the third equation is kind of handy, see, because the first two, when you're solving for velocity or position, you need to know the time. 
uh, a mathematician might say those two equations are parametric in time. If you know, do I still have everybody? Yeah, look, we're up to 30 now. Okay, if you know the time parameter, you can figure out what the position or the velocity is using those two equations. So it's parametric in time. What the third equation does is, well, what, what if the problem you're doing doesn't involve time? It involves how far something moves. And if you, you notice, there's no time in there. There's only displacement. Velocity and acceleration are related to displacement. And so that would be a handy, quick step to get it done. And I, I just tell you, the way this comes about is what you might expect if you take an algebra. I need to eliminate time from the top two equations to get the bottom one. And so what I did on that handout that I posted on Canvas, I solved for delta t in the first equation. And then I plugged it right there and there. And I worked about four or five lines of algebra, canceled things, expanded things, all that kind of stuff. And I'm left with the third equation. It's a very handy one. And I'll be using all three of these equations on the examples that I do after we do polling. Any questions on these equations? Do you have to memorize them is one that often comes up for me. And I would say, no, you don't have to memorize them. They'll always be in an equation sheet or someplace you can look up when you're doing a problem. Um, but I think you have to have enough familiarity with them so that when you read a word problem, you can identify the pieces of these equations you have, and you have to decide, well, which one am I going to use to get myself to the thing I'm looking for, to get myself to the answer? So while you don't have to memorize them, you know, if a problem gives you initial velocity, final velocity, and time, and asks you, hey, what's the acceleration? Well, you got to realize in the first equation, you've been given in the problem statement three out of the four things, jump right on the first equation. If you've been given some other uh, information, you might say, well, I can use the second equation for that. And you have to be able to distinguish that. I work with students where they read a word problem, and they go, I don't even know where to start. And that means they're not able to process the information and then look at these three equations and pick the right one to start with, okay? Because they're, they're not familiar enough with them. If you're not, you've never seen them before, if you never had physics, these are brand new to you, my advice is, well, write all three down, uh, figure out what the problem statement has, and then kind of look at each one and go, ah, that's the one, I'll use that one. That one will get me to the answer quickest. Okay, that's always a good thing. Even though you'll write all three down, you're only probably gonna use one or two of them. Uh, it's, it's a good practice. All right, um, I'm gonna move on here, because uh, we're gonna do a little bit of polling. And so, here, this is I, I, one of the other things I wanted to ask is how many of you are planning to take the MedCats? Uh, that might be one of your motivations for this course. And so here's the first polling question, uh, dealing with acceleration. And it's giving you a position versus time curve and saying, hey, what's the acceleration from two seconds to four seconds? And if you're tempted to grab your calculator here, my advice on a question like this is always look at it and think before you just try to calculate. Couple people jumped right on the right answer. I saw that. That was good. Eh, but it's a distraction. This is why the medcats are tough, I guess. It's, there's a little bit of misdirection here, so be careful. A right, couple more. All right, going for a minute, so I'm going to cut you off. There's, I think there's one person not voted yet. Won't wait. Um, I want to share the results with you. And I'm going to tell you that that first answer there, you got to be observant sometimes. Notice that's position right there, not velocity, right? Okay, so I think what those people did, they went 10 minus 4. I'm not sure what they did. They went with the negative acceleration. But look, what is the slope of this line right here? Remember I said velocity is the change in position, the displacement over the change in the time interval. So the slope of that line is the velocity. Is the velocity changing? No. All right, if the velocity is not changing, I'm going to stop sharing here and I'm going to relaunch poll one. Let's try again on the vote with those words. All right, now you, you see the answer. 
All right. I didn't have to say it. That one person, I, I told you about my, my campus teacher in college, a man, he was very, inc- very politically incorrect. This was 40 years ago. A person convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. And so I convinced 21 of you uh, that, that the answer is zero. And so we'll end it. That's good. All right. You see the point. No, and, and the only, you know, you were, you were kind of, you're kind of locked in. You, you just presumed the velocity versus time curve and you, you saw a negative slope and you went with the negative answer. Uh, make sure you, you take a good look at those, um, at, those, at those axes so that you know exactly what you're calculating, All right? Because the answer, sure enough, is zero. All right, let's go on to the next one. Oh, look at that. I'm showing the answer again. Stop it. No, you didn't see it. I did. All right, so we'll stop sharing this and we'll move on to the next poll. I thought I deleted those and we'll launch this one. So this is a guy bouncing on a trampoline, I guess. Sags two feet and then it launches him back into the air. And at the very bottom, what's the, the direction of the acceleration? All right, majority are getting it. I'm gonna, most of you are in. So let's say I got 29, 29, we're all in. I'll share the results with you. And I, I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna throw out the downward answer, okay? He was moving downward. The trampoline takes you, lets you expand it and then it stops. And then it's about to launch you upwards. Well, the only way it can launch you upwards, right? Is if there's an upward acceleration. And so I'm pretty sure the answer has to be A. And if you were realizing that I hadn't uh, deleted the answer and you saw it real quick, it sure enough is upward, okay? And that's the correct deal. I I can't make those notes any smaller, right? And what is zero at this point, I guess? The velocity is zero at that point, but the velocity is about to go upwards. The only way the velocity can go from zero to being upwards is if there is an upward acceleration. We're going to be talking about free fall on, uh, on Friday. Uh, same, same idea. The acceleration doesn't go to zero just because the, because the motion stops, stops for, insta- for an instant. Uh, there still can be an acceleration. In this case, there is. All right, we'll stop sharing that. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, and I'll advance my slide here. And I'm not showing the note. And what we're showing is a train. And we're showing its position versus time curve. And the question is, um, on this graph, what's it doing? Speeding up, slowing down, part of the time speeding up, part of the time slowing down, moving at a constant velocity. All right. And remember, in a, in a curve like this, think about little slopes over a small area. Like maybe kind of look at a slope. Right. Is that going to go? No, nope, that's going to move that thing. Come on, draw. There we go. Draw. Yeah. So figure out what the slope is right there. Maybe right there. Find the slope right there. Okay. And then compare those and decide what it's doing. There's a slope, there's a slope, there's a slope. Two more in, we're about to end though, because it's been a little over a minute. Two more to go in, uh, maybe their internet's bad. All right, so I'll share the results with you. And speeds up part of the time and slows down part of the time was the majority answer. And so these are rough sketches, but how does my com- slope drawn right there and I just, I don't need that circle, compared to the slope right there, compared to the slope right there. That's the question, right? Because we're being asked for the speed. And I think the speed is greatest right here and the least right there, kind of intermediate there. It's never changing to go more to to speed up. I think since the slope is getting smaller, 
I think it's slowing down the entire time. I think the answer is B. Any questions on that? Since a lot of people saw two, what would it, what would C look like? Let's kind of try to draw that. If it was doing this, it would be speeding up, right? That would be speeding up. And then this would be slowing down on a position versus time curve. See, S low slope right here, higher slope right there, that speeds up. And then a low slope right there, that would be speeding up part of the time, slowing down part of the time. That's what that curve is looking like. You're only seeing this part up here where it's slowing down the entire time. Everybody okay with that? I'm, I'm always a little worried going on when the majority of the people pick the wrong answer, but hopefully you see the explanation now. It is slowing down the whole time. All right, we'll stop sharing that. Open up the next one. Slope of the curve on a position versus time graph is equal to this one. I just told you the answer to this one, if you were paying attention. Slope of position versus time. Yeah, okay. I can live with between those two choices and we'll talk about the difference. All right, looks like everybody's in. And so you split, I'm, I'm glad to see that the majority of people pick velocity, okay? And now I'm gonna draw two curves and let you know why I think one's a better answer than the other. So time and position. And I guess, um, let's draw that curve we just had a second ago, that one, where things are slowing down because you got a slope right here a slope, it's being hidden, a slope right there and a slope right there. And the velocity, the slopes are getting smaller, okay? And when I say, okay, the slope right there, the slope right there and the slope right there, I'm really saying that's the velocity at that instant, the instant where I'm drawing the slope, okay? What would average velocity be? Well, if the particle starts right here, and finishes right there, the average velocity would be the slope of that curve right there, right? That's the change in position, the displacement. And this right here is the change in time. And so the slope of that dash line is the average velocity. It's not as representative of the motion of the particle. And it really isn't the slope of this graph because the graph isn't a straight line. Okay, so the best answer here is the instantaneous velocity D. But if you pick C, I'm glad you remembered the slope of a position versus time graph is equal to velocity. The only time I would say it's the average velocity is that second curve I drew where position versus time was a straight line. Okay, if it's something other than a straight line, the better word is instantaneous velocity. All right, it's the instantaneous velocity. And we'll move on to the next one. I'm sharing results here. That's what we had. We were split between average and instantaneous velocity. And now we'll move on to the next one. All right, is it possible to have an instantaneous velocity and an instantaneous acceleration with opposite signs? And this is good because we talked about this in the video. And so since a lot of you know the answer, I spent, I think, two slides on this in the video. Uh, spent a lot of time saying it, so I'm glad everybody's, everybody's doing it here. Getting it right. Yeah. Share the results with you. Yes, it's true. Okay. And in the vernacular, right, if we have something that's moving that way with some velocity, and the acceleration is in the opposite direction, 
the word we would use would be uh, decelerating. Like when you come to a stoplight with your car and you hit the brake, you're decelerating. Your, your velocity is still moving forward towards the light, but it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter over time, right? It goes from there, and a second later, it looks like that, and a second later, it looks like that. And maybe I should draw it like a motion diagram, right? I should put them out. The velocity vectors are getting shorter until you finally come to, a le to rest right at the, uh, at the stoplight, and that's because your acceleration was in the opposite direction. There are some people that think deceleration means negative acceleration. Well, sure, in this case, the acceleration is in the negative direction because I started with velocity in the positive direction. But if I'd started with velocity in the positive direction, for example, or in the negative direction, for example, so velocity going that way, a positive acceleration would also be a deceleration. It would be what's slowing down this velocity. So just remember, negative acceleration doesn't necessarily mean uh, deceleration. It often does because, you know, just because we read from left to right, we often draw motion from left to right as well. And if the acceleration is from uh, right to left, well, it's negative and it's going to be a deceleration. But it doesn't have to be. Let's go on to the next one. There's my answer right there. And this is a... And move that over there so I can see it. Launch pole. All right, for which of these graphs is the acceleration zero? And remember, they're velocity time graphs, just like in that MedCat problem, MCAT problem. Oops, oops, sorry. Got ahead of myself there. Clicked the wrong, wrong place. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. It was quick. I think the majority of you got it anyway. Waiting about two more people, but I'm going to end it here. We got to keep moving. Yeah, and acceleration is a change in velocity over a change in time. And so I agree, A, is a velocity that's constant, it's not changing, but so one, I guess, is the velocity that's not changing. Four here is also uh, a velocity that's not changing. It's a specific velocity that's not uh, changing. It's zero velocity and not changing. But both of those, whether it's constant at say five meters per second or constant at zero meters per second, both of those represent zero acceleration. So one and four are both zero accelerations. So the answer is E more than one graph. Launch seven here. Uh, we're um, right there. There we go. And go to seven. Launch pull. All right. Block has a negative velocity. That's supposed to say x axis there. X. A negative acceleration is applied. What happens to the block? So picture your motion diagram. You got a negative velocity. And you've got a negative acceleration because it's to the, both to the left. What's going to happen? All right, 27 people are in, I'm ending it. And this is exactly what we talked about before, uh, just a slightly rephrased question. It does indeed speed up, it speeds up in the negative direction though. And that's what that negative acceleration is doing for us. Every bit as much as a velocity in this direction with an acceleration in this direction would speed up the object in the positive x direction. If the two vectors, the velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, they're going to speed up. If the velocity and the acceleration are in the opposite direction, the object is going to slow down. Stop sharing there. Move on to the next one. Let you see the answer and then go there.
always hate this. My least favorite uh, it was just bad karma. I, I told you, I, I think I refereed some volleyball and I was volunteering for Special Olympics, refereeing for the, the, the athletes, Special Olympics down in North Carolina. And I was driving back and I'd been volunteering for two days. And sure enough, I'm coming through Virginia. I think I got good karma because I've been a good citizen helping out. No, nope, I was doing like 80 in a, on a 70, 70 mile per hour zone. And I got pulled over, $150 ticket. Man, I hate that. I hate that. What are you going to do, though? Good karma didn't protect, protect me that time. All right. And this is a term of art in physics. And it, you kind of have to know a little bit, I guess, about how the radar gun works. It sends out an uh, electromagnetic pulse in the radio wave frequency, very quick. It hits your car, bounces off it, comes back. And uh, the radar gun looks at how the signal has been altered by your motion, okay? And so that happens very fast in an instant. And so sure enough, what most of you said, the instantaneous speed is what it's measuring for you. Okay. And so if the cop hits you with the radar gun and then you see the cop and you put your brakes on and slow down, maybe too late. Now, so I think what a lot of cops do is they do it again, just to see if you are trying to slow down and get back legal. And if they see you're reacting and trying to become legal, I think I've been let go a number of times, uh, or maybe they're just a little slow on hitting the gun until you get a little closer. But if they get you at an instantaneous speed in excess of the speed limit with that radar gun that happens in just a short period of time, uh, you pay $150, I guess. In any event, that's, uh, that's the question. Instantaneous speed is indeed the answer. It's a term of art, and you just have to learn it. It's a vocabulary word, just like taking a foreign language. All right, we're starting to finish this up here. I think I got the last one, and then we'll do some problems. Two ships, I'm a Navy guy, they're gonna be ships. And you can see that it's those two types of motions we were talking about earlier, where we looked at instantaneous velocity versus average velocity. Drives that point again. And I apologize, I can't do subscripts in the poll wording. So that's T sub B over in the poll section. And it's, it's correct on the PowerPoint slide, it's a subscript. That means the time at, at B, which is this time right here, All right. Most people are getting it here. Little time to think here. Remember, this is a position versus time curve. And so think about right at that time B, what's, what do the slopes look like? All right, 25 people are in. Need one or two more, and then we'll end it. All right, looks like that's probably about everybody. I'm gonna share the results with you. Okay, and I want you to look at time B right here. What attribute, what, and I'll call it a kinematics uh, uh, quantity. Kinematics is just a Greek word for motion, but we sometimes call this the study of motion. And you know, we're, it's talking about position, velocity, and acceleration. So since this is a position versus time curve, at that time, the attribute, the kinematics quantity that they have that's the same is their position, right? They're right on top of each other. They could be colliding at that instant. So they do have something the same at B, but it's not velocity. It's their location. It's their position. And I guess the next question then is, do they have the same speed at that point? Well, like I said, there's the slope of B, and there's the slope at A. The slope at A is not changing anywhere. A's, A's got a constant speed. B is apparently slowing down, right, as we talked about before. Those two slopes at TB at the time B are not the same, and so they do not, absolutely do not have the same, uh, have the same velocity at that point. So again, it's just like that MCAT question. Make sure you're watching what's on this axis. Had that been velocity versus time, well, they would have had the same velocity at, at time B, but this is position. What they have is position at the same time. I had a graduate school teacher who, if you ever gave a, a, a position, if you ever gave a true false question, you not only had to identify if it was false, but then you had to make it position. Yeah, you had to make it true. 
And so I could make statement A true just by changing the word velocity to position. All right, both ships have the same, have both speed up the whole time? No, A is a constant velocity, so it's not that one. Both ships have the same velocity at some instant before uh, time V. Hmm, that's an interesting statement. That one I can't say is false. I just have to think about it a little more. But then D, at some instant, both ships have the same acceleration. Well, what's the acceleration of A? Acceleration for A is zero, because that's a constant velocity, right? The slope is not changing. Um, B appears to be slowing down the entire time. So for this is for A, it's zero. For B, it's not zero. So I think I can eliminate uh, choice D as well. So I kind of went, those three aren't true. All right, so now where, is there a point before time B, somewhere in here, where they have the same velocity? Well, this one's velocity is its slope. Is there a point right here where if I kind of drew a slope line, and you know, if you if you understand what a tangent to a curve is, that's what I'm trying to draw there. Right about there, I could draw a line and calculate a slope, a rise over a run over a very small interval, and it would be about the same as the slope right there. And so at about that point, they probably have the same velocity. And so I, I do think C is the correct answer. And uh, the 14 e about half of you got it right on that. All right. Any questions for this? So I'm going to go on to, uh, to work some problems for you all and then let you work some problems and then we're done. Questions? All right, stop sharing that then. And instead, I'm going to share with you the worksheet for today. And I'm going to work with the kinematics equations. Put the poll away. Stop sharing. Go away. Uh, and I'm going to do, I think I said I'd do the first first two, and then I'll leave three and four for you, and, five, and I'll, I'll do 5A as well. All right, so let's look at one here, and uh, the very first thing I have to do with this guy, I think, unfortunately, is get it to meters per second, and so this is just a little review. If I start off with 60 miles, the difference is I, mile is MI per hour, right? I got to convert that to meters per second. And we give you the conversion for kilometers to mile. And so those two things are one. I need to put the mile in the denominator. And then I go 1609. I'm going to convert kilometers right to meters by moving that decimal point right to there. So 1609.3, now the four should be there, and that's meters. Okay, so that's that gets rid of miles and leaves me in meters when I multiply 1609.34 times 60. All right, so now I got to get um, hours to seconds, don't I? And hopefully you know, let's see, one hour is uh, 60 minutes, and 60 minutes is 60, it has 60 seconds every minute. So I guess one hour is 3,600 seconds. If you don't know that, you can do them one step at a time. Uh, one hour, is, and you put 60 minutes here, and then one minute is 60 seconds again. But I'm going to be bold and just know that um, that's 3,600 seconds. Well, my penmanship's not doing real good here, but hour cancels hour. And you can see now I got that meter right there per second. Um, Let's see, so I multiplied those out, and when I did it, I got 26.8 um, meters per second. Now, how many significant figures do I have to play with in this problem? You might be asking, and you kind of look, I got the zero, a lot of people will just, zero can be as many digits as you want, but I pretty clearly have three and three. So this is way too many digits for a final answer, but I'm going to use it again here in a second. And so I'm not going to let it go away. All right? I'm just going to, I'm going to stay with it. So now, because um, it's, it's an intermediate calculation. And so the next question, oh, I did want to make one, here's the, here's the extra credit problem of the day. And yeah, we're doing time conversion. Can anybody tell me how many minutes are in a year? And some of you who are musically inclined may know the answer. My hint is, have you ever sung any of the songs from the musical Rent? 
I'm looking at chat here. First person to tell me how many minutes. A little diversion here. I'm just breaking it up. No, yeah, there we go. Nina, that's it. So uh, seasons of love, right? The, I think that's the opening number in uh, in rent, right? Yep. Uh, Five hundred twenty-five thousand. You don't want me singing, believe me. Six hundred minutes. That's in 365 days. You do exactly the same unit conversion I just did on 365 days, convert it to minutes, just like we talked about, and you get that number. And I, you know, as a physics nerd, when I saw rent, uh, I forget what theater we were at when we saw it. Uh, that's the first thing I'm thinking, did they do that conversion right? And the answer was yes, they did. I've checked it. Not an astronomical year, which is 365 and a quarter. That's 306, that's the number of minutes in a calendar year, which was a, a great, a great, great musical. All right, moving on. Acceleration here. So we said the definition of the acceleration is the change in the velocity over the change in time. That's a crummy looking A. Okay, but we'll make it look a little better. There's my acceleration. And so what is the change in the velocity? 26.8223, that's the final velocity, right? What was the initial velocity? Zero meters per second. And what's the time interval? I'm kind of cutting it off right here. Recommend you kind of go through here and, and make sure you get your initial information. The time interval is, uh, is 1.97 seconds. All right, and what you get is 13.61. Uh, and again, I, I probably, I'm going to four digits here. It, I should round it to 13.6. Uh, but again, this is an intermediate calculation because I'm gonna need that number next here. So I wanna know, okay, while this car is accelerating, kind of think of a, a drag strip track, it's just moving along uh, from the start, so, you know, screeching wheels, smoke, the way the car goes, accelerating at that speed. And uh, the question is, um, how far does it go in this 1.9 seconds? And let's see, so what do I know right now? I know the two velocities, I know the time, and I know the acceleration. And so what equation gives me that? And uh, I think I'm going to go with this one. Uh, we said that x final is equal to x initial, that's an i, plus the velocity initial times the time interval, that's a delta t, plus one half the acceleration times the time interval squared because I think I'm looking for this, how far it went, okay? And I think I know everything else. Now, let's let, because we can, let's put the coordinate origin right where it starts. That's not in the problem statement, but I'm free to do that since I'm, it doesn't say it's not at the origin. Let's make the initial position be zero, why not? The initial velocity is also zero. And so all I need to do to figure out the distance traveled is say one half, the acceleration I just calculated in part B here, 13.61 meters per second squared. Ah, Jackie. Do you see, everybody see what Jackie just put in chat? I owe you a point too, thank you. The units are excel meters per second squared. I'm not sure what I said, but that's what I should have done. So Jackie catches my mistake. I, I fixed it right here. But sure enough, I owe you a point. Good catch. Thank you. All right. And then that's how the game's played. If I ever do something like that while I'm doing a problem, um, I, I wish I could tell you this was an, a, an intentional one just to see who was paying attention. This was simply a mistake. And we all make them. All right. So 1.97 uh, seconds and squared. And by the way, had I continued that mistake on down here, well, you notice I would have had a problem when I tried to cancel second squared with second squared to get meters, okay? And so I do did this out, and this time I'll only give my answer 26.4 meters. All right, so I have two points. I have one to Nina, I have one to Jackie on the last uh, worksheet. Any questions on this problem? Very common problem. It uses the uh, kinematics equation for constant acceleration that we talked about, and it's a good one. All right, this one's kind of a physics nerd question. Uh, so over a distance of one centimeter, an electron experiences, so that's a displacement, right? That's your delta x. An electron experiences a constant acceleration, and its final speed is pretty fast. So I guess that's the final, right? 
and we want to know what the acceleration was in meters per second squared. And I think if you notice, there's no time being discussed in this. And so that third equation that we talked about is probably the right one. Okay, velocity uh, final, sorry, that's an F, is equal to the velocity initial squared plus twice the acceleration times the displacement. It's handy here because what's the initial velocity? Right there. See, there's the initial velocity. Starts at rest, zero. Velocity final is equal to twice that acceleration. Uh, it's unknown. So that's what I'm trying to find. That's squared. Okay, times delta x, which I know. And so that tells me that the acceleration is equal to the final velocity squared, which I know, as it's given, underlined up there, divided by twice the displacement. Okay, uh, so let's put those numbers in. Now that I've manipulated the symbols around a little bit, um, 2.6 times 10 to the 6. And that's a meter per second. And you got to square that. So 10 to the 6 squared is going to be something like 10 to the 12th, right? Pretty big number. Uh, you got to divide by the 2. And I changed the, centimeter, the centimeters to meters in my head. Uh, 0.01 meters is the, is the displacement. And so like I said, this is about 10 to the 12th. That's about 10 to the minus 2. This is going to be a pretty big number, isn't it? I uh, do the math first, and I get 3. Uh, 3, 8 times 10 to the 14th. And then what should my units be? Well, let's see. I've got a meter squared per second squared in the numerator divided by a meter. So one of the meters cancel, and I got a meter per second squared. All right. And you're going to do number three here. You might have just a few minutes to do it. I'm going to go, and you're going to do number four. I'm going to go on to this last one right here because um, I haven't used the equation by process of elimination. I have not yet used this equation, have I? That the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. And so you might suspect that's the equation here. But we have an initial speed of that, and we have 2.5 seconds of time interval, um, and we know the acceleration. So that should be a delta T, shouldn't it? So the, the only thing I don't know is the what is the speed, what's the final velocity if this is true. And so uh, velocity initial, 5.2 meters per second, plus the acceleration, 3 meters per second squared. That's really 3.0. And then I multiply by 2.5 seconds. And notice second cancels one of those. So I got a meter per second here. I got a meter per second there. I can add, just add those guys up. And I got 12.7 meters per second for the final speed. Okay, so I've used each of those three equations. And now it's your turn. Uh, I guess you got a uh, shortage of time, didn't I? You only got about two, three minutes to go. But um, if you'll take a look at... Uh, Problem three, and I will hang around for office hours. I'm going to just go refill my coffee cup, and I'll be back in just a moment once we end here in a minute. But uh, these are the problems you have to do, and you do them exactly the way I, I, I did these three. Okay. A uh, quick question. Sure, go ahead. Um, so for the previous worksheet, for the last problem, when I um, figure out the displacement, I didn't get that right. Can I go back and edit that and resubmit the assignment, or...? Have I have I put a grade on it yet? I haven't checked. Okay, if it's already graded, it's in, and I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, you know, but if it's I, oh, and I, that's a good point though. Sometimes a mistake like that, if everything else on your paper is pretty good, you're still going to get a four out of four. So don't assume because you got a four out of four that your work was perfect. Go back and check to see if I left any marks, and that is why I like Canvas. I literally take my pen uh, that I bought that writes on my tablet and I mark up your papers. And four, if you got a four out of four, and I think you did actually, uh, that was your only mistake. You got a four out of four. If there were other mistakes too, uh, well, you might have got a three out of four. Okay. So, but three out of four, four out of four, they're both good grades. 
All right, it looks like my time is up with you, so I can't insist you stay, but anybody who wants to hang and finish these worksheet problems, I'll be back in just a second. Y'all have a great day. Uh, I got a couple, kind of, I have one cool YouTube video. You got a couple videos to watch for Friday. Um, please take a look at them there. They'll be fun. Have a great day, and I'll be hanging around to do these problems. And I owe Jackie and Nina points. 525,000. I'm going to mute myself.